Hello, welcome to part 29 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Here, we will be discussing day-to-day -day clinical scenarios with detailed explanation. Let's move to question number 141. A physical therapist evaluates a patient with back pain and determines that the patient's best plan is contributing to this pain. Which of the following orthotic intervention is most appropriate for the patient? Option A. Metatarsal pad Option B. Solid angle foot orthosis Option C. Hinged angle foot orthosis Option D. Longitudinal arch support And the answer is Option D. Longitudinal arch support Explanation to this question is A metatarsal pad a solid angle foot orthosis and hinged angle foot orthosis will not correct a longitudinal arch. The longitudinal arch support is the only orthotic given that will address the best plan test. Now let's move to question number 142. You are treating a patient's status post knee surgery. In the evaluation, you are setting up a short and long term goals for this patient. Note that when the patient originally came to the physical therapy, his range of motion was 0 to 73 degree and strength of the knee extension was 4 out of 5 and knee flexion was 5 out of 5. Which of the following is an example of long term code? Option A. Patient should be able to perform left knee flexion 90 degree. Option B. Increase patella mobilization to minimal defect. Option C. Increased range of motion to 125 degree of flexion. Option D. Eliminate the soft tissue mobilization defect distal to patella. And the answer is Option C. Increased range of motion to 125 degree of flexion. Explanation to this question is A long term goal would be to increase the motion to 125 degree of flexion. The other choices, a patient should be able to perform left knee flexion, increase patella mobilization to minimal defect, and eliminate soft tissue mobilization defect distant to the patella, are all examples of short term goals. Now let's move to question number 143. A physical therapist is working with a patient who has multiple medical issues and has just finished chemotherapy. Which of the following test is most appropriate to measure changes in this patient's endurance over time? Option A. 10 meter walk for time. Option B. 6 minute walk. Option C. Timed up and go. Option D. Maximum VO2 assessment. And the answer is Option B. 6 minute walk. Explanation to this question is The 10 meter walk for the time test addresses the speed more than endurance. By definition, the 6-minute walk test is the only option that addresses endurance. The timed up and go test does not measure the endurance. A maximum VO2 assessment does not directly measure the function endurance. Now let's move to question number 144. A patient is referred to you with an impingement syndrome of the right rotator cuff. You are to implement a therapeutic exercise program consisting of the increased range of motion as well as strengthening. On the scale of 1 to 10 with a 10 with severe, the patient is in an acute stage reporting of 6 to 7 level. Which of the following exercises would be the most appropriate to begin? Option A. Isokinetic exercise. Option B. Finger ladder of 0 to 140 degree times 20 repetitions. Option C. Resistive active movements from 1 to 160 degree with therapist providing resistance. Option D therapy in a stretching program below 90 degrees specifically for the supraspinatus and teres minor. And the answer is Option D therapy in stretching program below 90 degree specifically for supraspinatus and teres minor. Explanation to this question is in acute impingement syndrome, it is important to initially keep excess below 90 degree of range of motion. This is done to avoid aggravating the impingement syndrome while attempting to begin some general strengthening. Now let's move to question number 145. A therapist has been treating a patient who received a rotator cuff surgical repair with a session considering only passive range of motion for extended period. 
the patient has returned to a follow-up doctor visit and additional order to continue the passive range of motion only. Which of the following is the best course of action for the therapist? Option A. Continue the passive range of motion as instructed and call the physician to consult with him or her about the initiation of the active range of motion. Option B. Begin active range of motion within the painful range and continue passive range of motion. Option C. Passive range of motion and do not question physician decision. Option D. Perform passive range of motion and any other access that is within the normal protocol for this diagnosis. And the answer is... Option A. Continue with passive range of motion as instructed and call the physician to consult with him or her about the initiation of active range of motion. Explanation to this question is, it is best to consult with physician because of an extended amount of passive range of motion. A therapist should not deviate from physician's order, but a telephone call to clarify the order is necessary when the therapist feels that another treatment plan is more appropriate. So that's all for today. If you have any doubt, please mention in the comment box. For further learning, keep in touch with the channel. See you in the next part. See you. Bye-bye.